Before getting into multi-axis programming, it's important to understand some key principles and general Mastercam setup requirements to ensure successful programming. Here I have six operations, and if I were to backplot them, you can see the tool is moving around for the various faces, and then when it gets to the multi-axis tool path, the part is rotating around the screen. It's very difficult to see what's going on. Also, you'll notice these porcupine-like lines coming off of here, and those are actually the tool vectors displaying the angle that the tool is actually approaching and cutting at. I'm going to go into my backplot settings. Now I can get it those two ways, either here in options, or if I want to permanently set it up, which is generally recommended, I'll go under settings, configuration, and then backplot here. To keep the part from jumping around the screen and rotating, I'm going to turn off Simulate Axis Substitution and Simulate Rotary Axis. To turn off those vectors, that's this toggle here, 4 and 5 axis tool vectors. I'm going to save that to my configuration. And now when I backplot, it's a lot easier to see what's going on. Now one of the keys to multi-axis programming is view management and how to use and how not to use the WCS. Now these first five operations are tool plane positioning operations. The last one is a true five axis tool path. And we're going to go in great detail into the differences here. But the important thing is that the part must be located in the system top as it's going to be oriented on the machine. And the WCS is left at top. So we can see all these operations, WCS top, and then for the positioning operations, I can use the tool plane. However, for the multi-axis, the tool plane has to be left alone at top. Now once again, we're going to hit these in great detail later. So remember, you may have to move your part around the screen, do some translations and rotations to get it in the position of how it will be sitting on the machine. Now, in further regards to the machine, we need to talk about the interplay between Mastercam's backplot, verify, and full-on machine simulation. Now with backplot here, we just have a general representation of what is going to be machined. We really don't know the action of the tool or the machine. Same thing with verify here. You can see a general representation of the feature that's going to get machined. So half my sphere gets cut, but I really have no idea of how it's going to be happening. There are many different combinations and possibilities of axes and plane setups. So for example, this simple operation here, I'm going to run it through machine simulation with the 5-axis trunnion mounted to the table. And this is going to be one type of scenario. We're going to watch for some machine component collisions, maybe between the trunnion and the head, or some of the coolant apparatus and the trunnion. Another machine that this could run on just as easily is a 5-axis articulated head machine. Now it's the exact same tool path, just run on a different machine. We can see we've got much different collision detection needs here and possibly over travel situations we're going to encounter. Let's look at this part and another reason why it's so important to use machine simulation. Here I've got a regular 5-axis toolpath that's just going to swarf the walls. And it looks like I got some nice cutting action there. However, if I take this into machine simulation and run it, you can see at the corners here, 
I'm getting these big axis reversals. Now this is actually what could be happening out in the machine that we didn't pick up in backplot or verify. These are just a few examples as to why simulation is so important and highlighting some of the shortcomings of backplot and verify. Now you're going to have to work with your post developer to get a very accurate rendition of your 5-axis machine and your post processor. Because remember, it's a lot easier to troubleshoot on the screen in pixels than it is in hardware on the floor.